Simple numbers and statistics play an important part in our daily lives. They are everywhere, and much of their use is almost automatic. Comparing food prices in the market helps us make good decisions and household savings. Comparing school enrollment rates between villages and islands helps education authorities make informed decisions of where to invest in building new schools. Without timely and quality statistics, policymakers and planners will find it difficult to make good decisions. Without proper statistics, some seasoned development practitioners have stated repeatedly, we are flying blind. Some 15 years ago, Pacific Island countries joined the world community in embracing the Millennium Development Challenge, which set ambitious goals, widely known as the Millennium Development Goals, or MDGs, to improve sustainable development outcomes across a broad range of challenges, with commitments by governments and development partners to eradicate extreme poverty, improve education and health, promote gender equality, ensure environmental sustainability, and foster global partnerships for development. Better progress could have been achieved had Pacific Island countries and their 10.6 million people not been so vulnerable to global and regional economic and environmental shocks in the past decade. Rising oil and food prices, continuing global economic crisis, increasing frequency of natural calamities, and vulnerability to hazards are some of the development constraints faced by many small island economies that severely impact communities and put stress on the financial resilience of national governments. Another constraint less frequently entering the debate is the appreciation and capacity of governments to first formulate policies and plans that are based on quality and up-to-date statistics and information and secondly the ability to regularly monitor development progress and show in what sectors and where in the country development investments have had the desired impact. First of all, I mean, uh, statistics is, uh, you know, uh, really the facts. And the policy uh, and decision making should really be based on evidence. Uh, and so our job is to make sure that uh, uh, we collect the facts and we make it available to uh, policy makers. Statistics data are essential for policy formulation, for planning, for monitoring, for analysis, uh, for decision making. So it's really part of the, the foundations for all that important work that is necessary to deliver and support communities and people. Uh, studies are needed for monitoring purposes or reporting. Our governments have signed into various uh, global declarations, global requirements. And so the countries, the NSOs are required to provide this kind of support. And so, yes, statistics is very important. We need that to make informed decisions. We uh, need that to make the right choices. The 2000 Millennium Development Goals, or MDGs, have been an important catalyst for statistical development across the Pacific Island region and throughout much of the developing world. Major investments in statistics and efforts to build stronger statistical systems have addressed data gaps, provided more timely and quality statistics, and helped develop robust indicators to monitor development progress. For example, in 2000, only 3 out of 15 Pacific Island countries were able to provide information on hardship and poverty. 10 years later, 14 out of 15 countries were able to do so. And by mid-2014, 9 countries will have 2 or 3 different data points and thus will be able to, for the first time, actually report if poverty and hardship have changed during the MDG period. There are numerous sources of statistics. Most come from national statistical offices and government departments, such as health, education and agriculture. Other major sources of statistical information come from research institutions, regional and international organizations. Local community groups and individuals also collect statistics, which they use in their own work. Pacific Island governments generate their own statistics using national statistical offices or NSOs, 
and often work in close collaboration with local, regional and international organizations regarding statistics on health, migration, education, production, tourism, economic growth and almost all other aspects of daily life. As specific countries try to fulfill their MDG commitments, reliable statistics become even more crucial in making decisions, formulating policies and implementing programs. Uh, see, statistics is not only for government, because the statistical office is for the people of Fiji, uh, people from the university, academic, civil society, uh, have, should have access to up-to-date statistics, for, especially for their program. Uh, so, so now social statistics has become very critical, uh, because uh, if government is going to put in a program to support a targeted group like the disadvantaged women. So we need statistics. Certainly in our small island states, the main challenge is the very limited resources that we have for statistics and how to best use those statistics to get a coordinated national uh, statistical system where we have the statistics office working with health, working with education, working with reserve banks to provide a core national data set which has got quality, timely indicators. And that's a real challenge for us and it's something that we're just beginning to address. Well, one of the biggest uh, um, obstacles is uh, producing information on a timely basis. So, so um, there is a certain there is a certain amount of time when when the when the inf information remains relevant. So the longer it's out there, and it's the longer the longer you leave it, and it's not on, it's not published. It becomes less relevant than than when it when the incident or any occurrences or when it first comes out. As we are here now, trying to build uh, a regional collaboration and all that. It's important because they are, they are, there is a lot of effectiveness in this. Uh, like we have discussed, the South-South cooperation, learning from experience within other countries, uh, how we can work together, building the Pacific, uh, taking it to another level. The lack of expertise, insufficient institutional and technical support systems, and inadequate financial resources have often plagued statistical collection and analysis in the Pacific and undermined the central role national statistical offices NSOs play in collecting statistics, translating these numbers into meaningful information and knowledge and thus provide the very basis for evidence-informed decision-making. The Secretariat of the Pacific Community, based in New Caledonia, plays an important supporting role with its Statistics for Development Division, aimed at strengthening the capacity of national statistical systems and assisting social and economic planning agencies to collect and utilize quality and timely statistics and information. And we have a special mandate and a special also like a desire from us in the, in the division to, to, to pay particular attention to the needs of the small island states statistics offices. Uh, uh, many of whom have less than five staff and they still have like the bigger offices with over a hundred people like Papua New Guinea and Solomons still have the mandate to provide a huge range of statistics on a regular basis so for them it is a resource issue it is a capacity issue because they do not have uh, trained people across the range so in some of those instances we actually focus also on capacity supplementation. And that means where we have our staff doing services that are normally done by countries themselves and increasingly uh, enlist expertise from other island statistics offices uh, in a South-South type corporation. Up until 2010, no country in the Pacific had a national strategy for the development of statistics, NSDS, in place, the internationally recognized gold standard for strategic statistical planning. By early 2015, it is expected that seven countries would have a long-term statistics strategy in place, which is of fundamental importance to help build and sustain national statistical capacities to produce quality and timely statistics and indicators which are indispensable for evidence-informed decision-making, 
policy development and planning, and for monitoring development progress, impact and policy performance at national, regional and international levels. All the information that comes from the state's office is, uh, is used by our, our national planners. And um, uh, information like the GDP, the size of the economy, the change in the cost of living, um, information on import and export, as well as um, things like poverty, population distribution, and uh, health indicators. Statistics are also important for us in terms of um, justifying policy changes that we need to make. And I suppose as a, as a Minister of State, the, the, the most use I make of statistics is to justify to my colleagues in the Cabinet, um, in Parliament, to justify changes that we want to make to laws or to policy. You have to have a good evidence for that, that need for a change which comes from statistics that we can compile and provide. The Millennium Development Goals succeeded in attracting attention across the Pacific Island region and throughout the developing world on the importance of having access to quality and timely statistics to develop, implement and monitor development policies. Statistical data and information should be an important part of the debates on the post-2015 development agenda, especially when goals, targets and indicators are to be set. The challenge now for the international statistical community is to stand up and be counted and provide solid support to those wishing to use evidence in developing post-2015 policy priorities and also learn from the MDG process and be guided by realistic, achievable and measurable targets. We are at the moment discussing with Paris 21 and other interested partners like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to see to what extent we might be able to to convince uh, political leaders to actually elevate statistical development as a development goal in its own right. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, billions of dollars will be invested uh, in the post-2015 development agenda. And uh, we need to be able, we need to be able to provide both countries as well as their development partners with the evidence that the money invested is actually well spent, that the money invested is actually making impacts, is, uh, is uh, achieving the outcomes. Without regular access to quality and timely statistics, Pacific Island countries will find it difficult to effectively tackle the many social, economic and environmental development challenges they confront. Statistics is an integral part of development in today's world. Decisions cannot be simply made without the right statistics to inform them. Its usefulness spans many aspects of our lives and it is crucial to improving human well-being. Statistics shape the way we do things today and can be used to help us understand the best ways of how to do things tomorrow. As such, statistical development should become a development goal and priority in its own right focus on, on, on statistics as a development strategy, as a development objective, I should say, in its own right, is well and long overdue. Uh, we got to be bold. We got we to actually not only advocate, but as a uh, community of uh, concerned statisticians, we really got to uh, put our reputation uh, up there and saying, look, for us to do the job, we need that kind of political empowerment. And uh, uh, all the colleagues I know, we are ready to, to play our part in that.